Hello, my name is Scott Chacon. I'm the CEO of GitButler, and now we're going to do part two of Bits and Booze, the interview. Let's see if I can get a job as a Git expert. We're going into the hard round. Yes. This we're is going this into is the super tough. This is the the unanswerable. Yep. I'm going to introduce our next one, which is <laughs> which is a Spätburgunder. <laughs> so, uh, you're German. Yes. Uh, translate this for us. What is Spätburgunder? Spätburgunder. Um, good question. So Spät means late, but I actually have no idea what Burgunder means. Burgunder is Burgundy. Oh, okay. So it's a late Burgundy. <laughs> late yeah. Burgundy. Okay. So, so at some point. Uh, the Germans decided they were gonna, because like every country in the world that makes wine, they all take the French names and they they just use the French names, right? So yeah. in America, in Australia, South Africa, it doesn't really matter. It's all Pinot Noir, yeah, right? Which is a very French phrase, right? Yeah. Um, but the Germans have decided that they will rename Pinot Noir Spätburgunder. So it's the late ah, Burgundy, right? Okay. The late Burgundy sort of harvest. Yeah. There's also Weissburgunder and Graubugunder and there's like all of these. The grocery store, but I had no idea that they were like just renamed versions of yeah, the they're French just, thing. They're, yeah, they're just, they're French grape varietals yeah. that, that the Germans have come up with new names for. Yeah. As opposed to the Riesling yep. or the Gewürztraminer, you know, which are very German varietals, right? There's not gotcha. like an, a French or an English name for them. And this is a Qualitätswein, which we talked about maybe a little bit before, I actually don't remember, mm -hmm. um, which is sort of a, it's actually kind of a Tafelwein, it's like a, it's like a table wine. Okay. Um, the, the, the other one would be a, maybe you can help me with this, this, a Prädikatswein? Prädikatswein? I'm not sure what that means. Prädikatswein? It's like a, yeah. like a quality, or it's a, a higher quality wine, actually. Okay. Even though Qualitätswein sounds like a quality yeah. wine, Prädikat's wine is higher. It's like a better. I'm, so. I'm talking out of my ass here, but I feel like prädikat it would be like the English predicate, which is like in front of or better than. Actually, probably something like that. Yeah. So, this is a this is a probably tastes fine. Um, but <clears throat> what you'll a lot of times you'll see in German wines is QBA. Which stands for Qualitätswein bestimmte Anbaugebiete, which is okay. uh, maybe you can translate this. Yeah, so like quality zoned areas. To yeah, build so it's like wine, a special, wine. like yeah. a special, like farmland, special I guess. farmland, or like I special growing area. That's probably good. Right? Is that better? It. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's like a like a like an area that you can grow grapes. That there's only 13 of them in Germany, and so if you grow something from these, it can be a bestimmte yeah. Anbaugebiete. Um, this is not one of those. This is not from one of the. <laughs> so special I don't know if it's good or not. Gotcha. You still have some here, so get rid of it. Yeah, get rid of it. We're gonna go into the 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 final round. Final round. The master round. The That's monster right. round. Let's see if you can answer some of these. All right. Hard, so, hard Git questions. This is not um, like an explain me a, a Git concept or explain me how a command works. This is going to be a scenario, and you're going to have to try to explain how you would uh, okay. yeah, how you would handle this. So this is great. I'm so, totally going to fail this. <laughs> explain how you would recover from a force push to the wrong branch and rewrite the history to restore the branch to its previous state, all the while ensuring team members are minimally affected. Ooh. So you force push. So that, I get it. That is that yeah. is tough, right? Anytime you force push, then the problem is that any you don't know, because it's distributed, you don't know who fetches. Who's pulled it, oh, yeah. Like, and so now you don't know what head exists where. If you force push, a branch to the wrong branch, and and you're like, oh, that's not what I meant to do. You go into the ref log that we talked about before. You figure out kind of where that reference was earlier. You should be able to find the ref log of. So of this, the is, this is a reference. real use case for for the ref log. It is. It is. Yeah. If you want to if you want to go back and figure out where was that before, um, the ref log would be the only way that I can think of to to find uh, the history of that reference. And then you'd say, okay, this is the old reference. Force push that again. I mean, the way that you avoid this to some degree is doing something like push force um, if includes or or force with lease like there's there's options to yeah. to get push that says try to figure out if if I've seen this before and I've had this before yeah. and, and stuff and so if you're trying to push the wrong branch that should mitigate that 
Um, but if you do it, you should be able to go through the ref log, find an old reference and say, okay, just force push that again. Try to put it back to where it was. Yep. Because in the worst case scenario, what happens is that in the intermediate time, it depends on how long it takes you to figure this out. <laughs> in the intermediate time, somebody's fetched or pulled and worst case pulled and started doing work on it, yeah. right? And now, now it's very, very difficult because now they have to, they have to pull that down now they have and they have to rebase too. on top of that and then push it back up again, right? Yeah. It depends on how big the team is. It depends on how many people fetched in the meantime yeah. or, or worst case pulled and try to base some work off of yeah. it. Um, but in most cases, I think people would probably notice because it depends on how, how divergent the branches are, right? Yeah. The first case, I think, is relatively doable of how to undo it. I, I actually did this, actually. Do you want a you uh, horrible confession? <laughs> Let's hear it, yeah. Um, so I was fucking around with uh, having a bunch of different heads in a repository um, because GitHub had... Uh, GitHub Pages as like a separate, it's, it's GitHub Pages, you could have it in one repository and it'd be a completely separate branch that didn't, didn't have anything to do with your main code base, right? Gotcha. There's always kind of a problem, but, but it's kind of cool that Git can do this. And at some point I accidentally, in a public repository, put the GitHub head oh. as <laughs> a reference in an unrelated project and pushed it. Yeah, and so the entire GitHub source code repository. Was... I did not tell anybody this. <laughs> I don't even think I told anybody this at the time. I may be implicating myself in some illegal shit. Um, We're breaking news here, folks. I, this is breaking <laughs> news. This is a long time ago. It never came out. But yeah. like. And and people actually, interestingly, people found GitHub source code in other ways. Like we were shipping GitHub Enterprise in this in this way that people could reverse engineer and find secrets and stuff in. Interesting. Um, so we we got better about that over time. But but very very early days, I accidentally pushed the entire GitHub repository yeah. to a branch of a public repo. Um, that uh, because I was doing testing. Was it a public repository of your own or? Uh, like I a, actually of a don't remember. I think it was one of mine, but it could have been it could have been a a, a repository on the GitHub board. Okay. Um, but it was it was something unrelated. But it wasn't like a random person. <laughs> no, it was me using. trying to test out stuff for writing the book. I think I was trying to figure out like how do you gotcha. do this thing, and I accidentally yeah. and then I pushed, and then it, it went up, and I was like, oh yeah, no, that was um, it was only up for a little while. I think I figured it out pretty fast and. Um, but and I just deleted the reference. Actually, yeah. if you're wondering how to delete a ref, actually, most people probably don't know how to do. Do yeah. you know how to delete a remote reference? I would try to force now, push over now it somehow. I'm, I don't now know. I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing you. Yeah. No. Tell me how. Um, so there's there's a ref spec. You can yeah. do git push, and then you do the reference uh, on your side, and then a colon, and then the reference on the other side. So you can say, I want my master branch to be you know, master ABC on the other side. So you can say, uh -huh. git push master colon master ABC, right? Okay. And that'll do that. Um, actually, now there might be a thing for it. I might be too old for this question. Um, but at the time, there wasn't a way to just delete a reference to say, yeah. delete this reference off the server. Um, but what you could do is you could say, git push uh, master colon and then nothing, mm -hmm. just master colon. And what would that do? It would say, I want my master branch to be nothing on the other side, right? And so it would delete the reference on the other side. Oh. Um, and gotcha. so if it, if it found like a, mat, a yeah. matching reference. So that, that was the sense. way that you could delete a, a remote reference. Yeah. I don't even remember what the original question was, but yeah, I hope I, I answered. Well, I, I think you did, yeah. The, the, <laughs> the question was, how would you save the, I guess, the, I mean, the question was, right, what would you do to kind of revert from a force push that overwrote? Yeah. Um, so that's things? how to revert. The, the problem is, how do you deal with deal everybody with the that other, did anything else, right? Exactly. And like, there's the just folks. no way. Like, you have to figure out, you have to reach out to everyone and yeah. be like, hey, this happened. Yeah. Like, here's how to deal with it in one of the three scenarios you can be in. Yeah. And yeah. Give you a one out of one for that one, Mr. Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> So this is another uh, situation kind of question. Uh, it goes, your team has a complex feature branch that was rebased onto main, but you discover that one of the commits is in the middle of the rebased branch, and it actually commit contains a subtle bug. You need to A, extract only the buggy commit, B, fix the bug, C, reinsert the fixed version back into the same position in commit history, mm -hmm. and D, ensure that all subsequent commits are properly adjusted. How would you sure. solve this while maintaining a clean Git history? I, I like, so thank you, Claude. 
<laughs> it's 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 a good question because I think actually this comes up a lot. Right? I agree. This could be something. This is that, yeah. You rebase. I mean, it, it doesn't even really need to start with I, you rebase something. It, it can really just be I have a branch and there's I have three commits and, and I they're they're, they're well documented commits and I there's a bug in I get review on a bug in number two mm -hmm. of of a four patch series right. or something. So how do I edit that? And actually, there's a bunch of different ways to do it that I've seen people. I've seen people like core Git committers do this in different ways, right? Like I, I've spent a lot of time recently talking to people about their workflows, and and they approach it different ways. So the main ways to do the way that I would do it probably is I would fix the bug. Um, so I'd go into the code, I'd fix the bug. You I'd like, say you your copy, you're fixing it locally, and then you fix it locally, yep. make sure it works, yep. and then what you want to do is squash it into the commit. That, okay. that you wanted, you sh it should have gone in. That it should have gone into. That's important. Right. Okay. And so there's a an option to git commit called dash dash fix up. And so you can say git commit dash dash fix up. Okay. And then give it the SHA of the commit you wanted it to go into. And okay. then what it will do is create a new commit. And then you do a thing called git rebase dash dash auto squash. Mm. Right. And you give it the base of kind of what the series is. And it will see that the last one you did was supposed to be squashed into, it was a fix up It'll for a previous commit. Up. And it will essentially sure. do a git rebase dash i and then move that commit to be squashed into the one before. Gotcha. And it will rewrite it, right? Yeah. And, and it will rewrite the series properly. You can instead do git rebase dash i and get this like to the base and get the series and, and say i want to edit this one and like pop into that and fix yeah. it which is also a totally reasonable thing to yeah. do like i just did a, a bits and boots with patrick steinhardt who does that sometimes he, right he loves like, rebase minus he, i or <laughs> he does yeah he'll, he'll just pop in and say okay here's the feedback i'll go into each one and fix the things yeah. one by one other people will fix all of them and then do fix up commits and then do an auto squash yeah. to say like pop them into these places Where and, and squish them in. Rebase dash I and then saying edit just goes and rebases and stops you there and lets you fix it. So it depends on do I need to work on this and figure out if it's right or not and then continue. Yeah. Um, I would probably go for the latter. I'd probably do fix up commits and then auto squash them. Yeah, it seems um, a little bit easier. Or you can also just do like commits and say this fixes this and this fixes this and then do a rebase dash I and then in the script move them and say okay. this is a squash commit and this is a squash commit, yeah. right? Or there's an interactive rebase option that is don't mess with the commit message. Um, I think squash will make you kind of Combine the, the commit messages. The There's one that's just like yeah. just use the upper commit message. Um, so so that's like an option as well. There's yeah. there's a previous bits and booze I think that we we just filmed that 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 goes into interactive rebase that kind of goes over a lot of this. Yeah. But a lot of it is that right. It's interactive rebase helps you yeah. kind of amend the history and make it look like how you wanted yeah. to be in the first place. Does that uh, does that also satisfy uh, the rest of the um, like the last couple of points here? Where yeah, I mean, all I think all four of the questions really are: How do you do how interactive do you rebase? rebase well? Thank you very much. <laughs> That's that was correct. All right, Mr. Chacon, yes. we got one last question for you, and that is: Can you cherry pick a merge commit? What is your answer? I don't know why you would. Okay, right? because. If you're cherry picking stuff, normally we, cherry pick is like rebase is like a bunch of cherry picks, right? And so what you really want to do is you want to have a branch, and then you want to have another branch, and that they've diverse, and then you say, okay, these ones I want to kind of put them on top of the other one. Yeah. And if you have a mer usually what happens in a merge is I've merged this in, and so then if you're cherry picking, the point is to remove the merge, right? You're like. I've, I'm merging in from master, but then if I'm rebasing on the master, yeah. there's no point in doing the merge, right? Yeah. The whole point of the rebase is to undo the necessity of the merge. There are, I guess, arguments that you could have a bunch of stuff that comes off of one thing and it becomes very complicated and you want to move that whole like, like thing on top of, yeah. of something else, like of, of kind of where it started, of that entire... and and you want to have like three or four branches that, and you want to like 
keep those merges maybe but i've never run into that and so okay. i've 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 had people ask me this right and i don't have any idea rebasing is the same thing there there i think there's ways to say if there's merge commits in the rebase how yeah. do you do this we've talked about this in our branches and stuff like what yeah. do we do with merge commits if if they happen like in a thing that we're trying to do in Git Butler and, and trying yeah. to sort of rebase them, like, do we just drop them entirely? I've do we try become, to like allergic to merge commits? They, they, I'm trying to avoid horrible. them in my work. Yeah. It's, it's either you're in the rebase sort of mindset, yeah. right? And like everything's a patch series, or I used to be in this merge mindset, right? Like this, this was my go-to, right? It was that merges are always better. Just merge from mainline and then fast forward or like, I, I loved merges because yeah. it simplified everything from a work standpoint. From a history standpoint, not from a uh, you know yeah. from a collaboration standpoint, maybe not. I'm sure we can look at the the. We can ask ChatGPT. We can ask ChatGPT. Yeah. We can go. I'm sure we can go to the 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 man page, right? Yeah. And be like, how do you? <laughs> Hopefully. And and my assumption is that you'd have to tell it, because. I don't even know what it would know what to do, right? Yeah. Like, how do you cherry pick a merge? Like, you'd have to say, here's the parent that you care about, or like, is it a merge where commit? you're coming from? Yeah. Yeah, if it's a merge commit, how do you cherry pick that? Yeah. Like, so it's got like, two parents, right? Let's let's think about that from a, um, I have like, like two commits and then I merge from master and then I yeah. do two commits and then I want to rebase all these. What yeah. do I do with that merge commit, right? Yeah. Because I'm reba if you're rebasing it on the same thing, it doesn't make any sense, right? So you just drop it. Like yeah. most of the time, you'd probably just drop it. I guess, yeah. Um, but then you yeah. just got to bring those two branches together. But, but, and if you, yeah. I... Yeah, it beats me. <laughs> That's why we are interviewing you, Mr. Chacon. We thought you were the foremost expert in Git. This is where I fail. Unfortunately. <laughs> no, <this laughs> you weren't too dark. <laughs> too dark. I was trying to think of that Japanese, uh, that Japanese <laughs> supper, uh, whatever. Sabuku? That I was blanking on the word, yeah. <laughs> but all right, we, we we can keep it going from here. That you failed the, the failed the last question. All right, all and right. Then... Do you have one final question, or are we done, Mr. Shikan? I'm gonna have to talk to my team. We'll be reaching out. <laughs> oh my! God. Yeah. Do you want me to show you something dumb? Do you know how to find the center of balance of of something? If you put your fingers on, on a stick or something and you just, just move them together, in. it doesn't, you don't actually have to do anything. It will, it will automatically find the center of balance of something by just moving them together. Uh, I mean, I found it. It just was.